How is it? Sean from Combat Simulations, Cauldrons of War, Barbarossa. Welcome to my overview and tutorial of this awesome game. Awesome game. All right, so before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. It's free. And also leave comments and suggestions. And watch my videos and like them as well. Helps me a lot. I've been looking for a game, a simulation that simulates army level combat for years. For years. And the funny thing is, <clears throat> I was at the same time also looking for a game in this last couple of weeks to supplement my other videos on my channel. So with those two in mind, I was looking for this type of game. I was actually, for years I've been looking for something for army, army level combat. No game that I've seen today. And for years I haven't seen this. You know, everybody, everybody, uh, all the developers develop games for these, you know, the, the, the company level, the brigade level, the small unit actions, hex base, all this type of stuff, which is great. I love that type of, of, of game. I love those war games. They're brilliant. But they, they've been done to death. Okay. Nobody simulates army level or army group combat. Nobody's done that. And I've been, I've been looking for a game like this for years. And the funny thing is I was looking for a game for my channel on Steam to supplement my videos. And then I found this game, which I've been looking for. You promise you could go look out there. Go look out there. They simulate divisions and cores and uh, small units. And, but nobody simul simulates actual army groups on their own. Not broken up into all these little pieces on x base counters. Army group level combat. And this game does. Can you believe it? And I found it. All right. So what I'm going to do with this, this overview tutorial is I'm, there is a tutorial here. There's a tutorial. You've got the load game, hot seat, and PMB. You can play as the Germans or play as the Soviets. Now, if anybody does know this, obviously this game covers the war in the East, the opening stages of uh, Hitler's, the, the Germans' attack on Russia. All right, so that's this one, and there is a there is a the expansion which I also bought as well from Steam. I, I got it at a nice uh, discount, you know, the holiday discount, and I got the uh, Stalingrad Cauldrons of War Stalingrad as well, which covers not only the Stalingrad uh, campaign, uh, the fight in Stalingrad, it also covers uh, fall uh, fall blow. Uh, the, you know, the the Caucasus when the Germans went this army group south went and attacked the Caucasus, going down to. The, the the oil fields in in, in the in the south so I, I just took both so i'm gonna play in my in my on my channel i'm gonna play through this entire game um and i'm also gonna do the stalingrad one as well because i got them both so uh this is just i'm just now i'm just gonna do a with this game the tutorial is great it gives you just it goes through the menu options or whatever so how i structured this is i'm going to i'm gonna actually play a few turns and so you can get a better understanding of what how this game simulates that type of combat. So I'll go through a couple of turns, maybe one or two turns, just so you get a better idea. I'm still learning the game, okay? Because I've spent a few hours on the game, but the game is it's very if you're used to all the small level combat, it actually takes you out of your comfort zone a bit. Because it's very it's very easy to play this game because it's it's abstracted at the army uh, army uh, level. And um, you can easily, you know, you can easily get confused because it's very, it's it's very easy to play, but what I meant, easy to play, but hard to master. So, you know, and, and the thing is, how would you, and they've done it so well here, because even though it's abstracted at that top level, how would you actually simulate army level combat? You can't really on the below levels. You can't have it. You can't have a hex max ma map to simulate army level combat. How would you do it? How would you factor in all this? And they've done this so well. They've actually they've actually hit it on the nail. This is by Maestro Syn uh, Synetic. This this developer, this guy, he developed this game, and it's really really good. All right, so I'll go through just I'll just play a few turns as the Germans. And uh, so you can get a better idea of how the how the actual game flows. So let's just start to, as the Germans. All right. So so you've got this is the explanation of Barbarossa, June of the, June to December, uh, nineteen forty one. Okay. So you've got that main campaign. There's your levels of difficulty: harder, harder, and hard. Normal. I keep it on normal. You've got your main uh, Operation Barbarossa campaign. Uh, 
you've got then there's various scenarios within this campaign that you can play out individually like your operation typhoon the moscow counteroffensive and the winter counteroffensive then the great campaign now you need to unlock you need to sorry you need to score at least 11 points as the germans to unlock this great campaign now here's the thing the germans historically only got two points and you need to get 11 so you need to cock you need to defeat this game properly at 11 points before you can unlock the great campaign now the great campaign is not now extending the game for the whole night to 1945 it's also the time frame is still the same but it's just it's just more fleshed out in terms uh the the operations are a little longer and the winter uh, winter offensive is more uh, there's more time with that so it's 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 operation barbarossa but just a little bit longer in terms of how the game is fleshed out so it'll spend more time on the operations and whatever but you need to do this operation barbarossa and get 11 points to unlock that so i don't know i don't know if i'll be able to do that but yeah we'll see as we go when i play it all right so i'm not going to read this this is just about operation barbarossa then you get these screens this just like highlights the opening phases the drive to the east i won't read this when i do the playthrough of the campaign I'll go, I'll read through all of these. So you get these opening screens, and this just tells you what your winning conditions are. The enemy is caught completely off guard as waves of planes stra stra strafe and bomb its airfields along the 1,200 kilometers of the front. Six armies and four armored groups sweep over an unprepared enemy. And here, you, this is what you need to, to get to win the game. The following objectives you will, will give you victory points. Take Moscow 3, control the Baltic 3, Connect with the Finns on the Serve uh, River, one point. Kiev and Kharkov, two points. Odessa and Sevastopol, two points. Take Rostov, one point, and annihilate, annihilate the Red Army, one point. Okay, the game will end on January the 1st, 1942. Historically, the Germans only won, only got two points. You will need to get six points to actually win the game. Now, it's a weekly, it's a weekly turn game. So... Uh, you start in June twenty, uh, June the 22nd, 1942, and you end in January the 1st, 1942. So it's weekly turns. Now, historically, the Germans only got two points from this whole campaign. And you need to get six to win the game, which means you need to... And that's not even the 11 to open the grand campaign. Can you believe it? All right, let's go on. Now, this is just... You get this... During the... When, in each turn you make, you get different options available to you. You can... You can switch your axis of advance. You get uh, things like the political commissars are the backbone of the Red Army. You get decisions to make about what, what you, how you're going to progress. And for example, they will be shot. These, these in the fight against Bolshe uh, Bolshevism, one cannot count on the enemy to behave according to the principles of humanity or the law of nations. We should expect, in particular, political commissars of all types as true bearers of the resistance. That they will treat our prisoners with hatred, cruelty, and inhumanity. We should probably reserve some special treatment for these commissars. So this is just asking you, what do you want to do? Do you want to shoot them, or do you want to, you know, they leave them? They will be treated like the like the others. So if we, if we, now you get this in the campaign as you play off each turn. Not always, but these these come up, these screens come up, these events where you can pick different options to make different decisions. Like, for example, they will be shot. German armies, maximum cohesion, plus one, max, and barbarity, plus two. Now, explain barbarity to you now, now. And then I won't, there'll be no effects. So I won't pick that. Uh, then he, I won't read all this, but he's back off because this is your effect of your decision. Let's hope that the weakness will not turn against us. So he's just telling you what you've done there. And we go here to the main map. Now, this is the map of the entire front. Okay. Now, you've got your North North Army Group North, Army Group Center, Army Group South, and the Romanian Front. Here's your barbarity rating. Now, when you as you make take certain decisions in the game and certain actions, it affects your barbarity. Okay. So what that means is that just in that just gives bonuses to the Red Army. So the more barbaric you are in his country, the more stubborn he'll be, the more cohesion he'll get. And this grows over time. So all your decisions give you advantages, and the things you do give you advantages, but they also affect the barbarity, your barbarism. So you've got to keep an eye on that. 
So the map is a pretty standard. You can zoom in and out. These all here are, are operations, but I'll get to that now. Let's just look at the map firstly. This just highlights the fins because they come available on the second turn. And then back to the, the main front. Then over here, you can you can actually make it... Let me just go in a bit. You can actually give you... Uh, just shows your little armies with flags and what you've got in reserve and whatever. I keep that off. It's not necessary. You have to go in inside and look if you want to have a look. The weather can go on and off. Um, this just takes all your all the, the arrows off. All right. All the details of the front. And then this just takes off your command points. And then this just ta changes the style of the map. So depending on how easier it is for you to look at i usually keep it on here because the map looks pretty nice like that and you can scroll left or right or whatever now your let me just give you an idea yeah uh yeah your your sorry okay your <laughs> your armies it's historical okay so the germans have these sort of these army groups and then they have what they call as operations and facing them are the Russians, and they have these fronts, okay? And there are units in these fronts, armies in these fronts. Now, let me just start, let's just start with the, the southern uh, army group south, to give you an idea. It's got, you've got two places. Okay, let me just, because, uh, yeah, there we go. All right, why not? Okay, so you've got the south, the southern front. You've got the South Army, the headquarters, and then you've got the operation. So if we click on the South, we go to the, the, the Army headquarters, the, the Southern Army Group, South Army headquarters. And in the game, you, you he has what they call his reserves. These are subsidiary forces that you can you can send to, depending, depending, you can send to the front, to your operation, all right? You can refit them, you can... You can you can do on a number of things with them. Now this headquarters place, this is the the main army group south headquarters. They've got a rail capacity. The rail capacity is basically your supply. This is your automatic supply every turn. So your armies have what they call is ammunition and 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 fuel, depending on whether they panzer corps or they just normal infantry, how much they have. Now, you, this is an automatic supply by rail to all your units that are at the front. The trucks also supply, if the, if the rail can't give you enough uh, um, supply, the trucks will be used. This is the amount of planes you've got. Now, it's abstracted. Remember, the planes are, this includes fighter bombers. Uh, it's just, it's an abstracted variable. Because we remember now, we're dealing with a much higher level. Of, of combat not a like a detailed how many stukas does he have you understand where i'm going with this then another now these are reserves the, the tanks the artillery and your your infantry now whenever you refit because your units get tired and they lose cohesion and they lose men and they get you know they get they they get depleted it comes from these hqs up top here and they replenish your front lines and on top of that this hq the main hq he has uh, reserves in here that he can send up front. And they can do various things. They can be sent to the front. They can refit. Some of them can uh, uh, take care of bandits. These are these partisans and stuff like that. So you've got various things you can do with these guys. All right. Now, just to give you an idea, that was the southern front. Now, the southern front has uh, what they call is an operation. And if you click on that, then you start to see the details of the southern front of what's inside here okay so it consists of the sixth army the 17th army and the panzer group are one and there is a slovak force which is in reserve okay he's not yet in the front you can bring him to the front he's not in reserve by the main he's not in reserve over here he's, re he's in reserve of your 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 front access here of this area here. now each front has an operation that they need to they need to, to 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 do and this front this operation is uh this is the let me just give you an idea yeah uh so i can just so you can get this uh where are we now uh geez, where is it now again usually it tells you yeah 
but I can't see it. Okay, the road to Kiev. Sorry, man. You know, <laughs> I'm still getting used to it as well. So the road to Kiev, and you've got zero percent. So that's the that's the drive to Kiev. All right, and it explained, and the, and you need to get a hundred percent to finish that, to to conquer Kiev, to finish that operation. Now you get various operations as the game goes. Various operations appear. Now, in your front, in the right in the front, you've got that's the progress to the road to Kiev. The the how much you've 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 accomplished so far. That's the command points. Now, each thing that you do, each like a blitz or breakthrough or infiltration or split the army or or things you do to the Russians that are there, their front armies there, costs a command point. Each each um, front, each army group has certain amounts of command points. Like the Romanians have only got three. So each time you place an action with an army, it costs one of those. Even to refit or resupply or whatever. So you only got five. This is the width. Width is actually important. It indicates the number of armies it would take to effectively hold this front. Having fewer units in the front lines, uh, then this score will make your, your, your lines true colanders and prevent your forces from defending effectively. Now you've got to remember this is army level combat. So you don't, this is not, there's no... The terrain is abstract. Is, is is abstractly represented in this area. Uh, I, I, I hope I'm I hope I'm explaining this properly. And then you've got the maximum rail capacity, and you've got each one of these. Sorry, the maximum rail capacity, and I think there's one. Where is it now? There's the fuel. There's the fuel. There is. Jeez, if we can get this. Or is it this one? Oh yeah, you've got the maximum rail capacity and you've got also the rail capacity for each of your units. You see, this is the headquarters, yeah. You've also got rail capacity for each of your units as well. So this is the maximum rail capacity that you're allowed to use. And then this one, I just want to just check here again. This is just the rail capacity for this area, okay, that you use here as well. So your rail capacity means the number of Every time they automatically your units, your armies get supplied each turn, and it's based on the rail capacity. So I would get, so for example, if I ran out of fuel and ammunition, it'll supply me with that, and it'll take one off, and it'll supply this army and supply that army, but there's a fourth army, and then I'll have nothing left. If there's a fifth army, then I won't be able to supply the fifth army. So that's basically your rail capacity. And then there's also the area here, which is your standard rail capacity, which is, indicates the number of armies which receive automatic supply, whatever the weather conditions. So this is inside your group as well. If I understand it, that's how that works. You just got to remember that rail capacity is like a... Um, see, there you have it as 3.5 is your maximum, but you also have 3.3, three, which is the rail capacity for the area. Now... Uh, air power dis, uh, disputed. So this is via air superiority, and then you can go to your headquarters on the south. Okay, good. So let's start and see what the armies are. Now you've got to you've got to progress, like I said, one hundred percent to for the road to Kiev to to be able to complete this operation. Now each each army, and there are don't get me wrong, it's not only armies in in this game. You've also got like cores and like smaller uh let me give you an idea yeah uh, let's go to the south you've got like smaller sort of cores and divisions that are also represented in the game but that's only that's only just as supplementary forces you can also split these up and make them into smaller cores but your main your main warfare in this game is by army and and group level army group uh, level combat moving and fighting all right, I, I will explain that. Now, for example, okay, like this, this, the Sixth Army. You have this is the amount of tanks you have in the Sixth Army. The artillery is six of six. You've got seven, seven trucks, and you've got eleven infantry. Now, this artillery is abstracted. I mean, it's it's basically counting all all types of artillery and anti-tank guns and all this type of stuff. Remember, we're dealing at a high level here. Then you've got that army's cohesion and experience. Now, a spade is experienced. Uh, you get, let me, yeah, you get also clover, which is less non-experienced. You get a, 
you get a, a towel which is like trained and, and that's what they got the experience levels as you see there the clovers the clovers are very experienced and the cohesion level so as the army moves and fights and does all kinds of stuff and the weather changes and and the mud comes and all this type of stuff you lose cohesion that's why you need to refit these guys they need to be refitted and rested then you've got a generals generals are represented in this game also very important each army group and each uh, division or, or corps has a general and he's rated from one to five now the generals affect basically what kind of combat actions you can do with with your armies what they can do and their effectiveness in fighting and moving and defending and all this type of stuff and that's basically how your armies are covered now each one of these army groups all right armies has different capabilities different things that they can do and as you see the infantry is basically assaulting and shelling and your panzer can blitz now if you on the in the game you can go to the actions wiki and find out exactly and i won't read through all this find out exactly what these actions what are the consequences of assaulting uh, offensive actions panzer actions supply what is the what is the thing behind the supply what is the reserves air bombardment it gives you an idea of what those all of these actions are now when you start you can do stuff to the army you don't pick a unit you don't pick the like we know that we've scouted the fifth army there and the sixth army there and we know a little bit about it because we've scouted it right but we haven't scouted this fifth cavalry so we know very little about it we can see its cohesion but we don't know if that's 100 percent and in reserve we don't know everything as well but we've scouted these these are these things that told us we've scouted this unit's in reserve now he's not like this unit over here this slot slovak unit he's also in reserve he's not in he's not in the um he's not in the army south reserves this is a different type of reserve this is a reserve to the front it's not a reserve in this area i hope i'm explaining this is a reserve in this area behind your troops in this operation and these are his reserves there now for example if i clicked on this one the kiev uh, district fortified regions they have stretched lines they are pinned and they are entrenched and it tells me what what they do so stretched lines will tell me pinned uh will tell me that the enemy has attacked with so much conviction that is reduced the uh reduced it to a defensive position and entrenched so each each unit gets things ha things happen to it it gets entrenched it gets isolated and you've got to and then and then it gives you this information here as well even if you get bandits and partisans in the area it tells you here which is brilliant now i think i explained this the front width i hope i did the front width basically let me just go through it again because i can't remember how i explained it. the front width basically indicates the number of armies you need effectively in this flag in this front to defend it successfully if you have less than two armies in there you uh, you you won't be able to defend this uh, this 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 area properly I, I don't know if i covered that i'm just trying to remember but just in case i didn't all right so basically those are the those are the things that you can do in an operation now i'm going to pick the the russians so depending on what the russian units and armies that are in there depending on what they've done or how they situated you get various options to be able to do this to them. now you're not picking on a unit to do these this is applied to the whole russian sort of front all the units in here so for example the germans started off with a heavy air, uh, uh, airfield attacks uh, on the first on the first day to destroy the soviet air force so you've got that available so if i click on air force and i say okay this is my operation it'll take one point off my operation and it'll perform an airfield attack. Now it's basically destroyed eight airplanes. Now that's a lot. That's a lot. Because you've got to remember, I mean, if we look at it, we've used three, okay? So that took us three. We used three and we've got three left. So the amount of airplanes in the, in the front is like sixes and eights and whatever. It's not, it's not like thousands. So that's a big amount. So if we click on this, we can look at the. Um, oh, it doesn't give me the. Doesn't give me the. I was hoping it does. It usually gives you a log here, where it tells you what the logs, the, the logs, the what actually happened there when you actually did it. 
So this is various things. It's it basically strategic suppression means you can actually suppress these guys that are on the back lines here, uh, the guys in reserve, and then the front. So each 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 sort of area, the reserves and the fronts, you can do you can uh, you can you can do this air superiority and all this type of stuff. All right. So now. Let me, I just hope I'm going through it so you understand. I'm just going to go through a few terms to basically give you a better uh, an idea of how the game actually plays. It's very easy to play. It's click and go, but it's there's a lot in it that you've got to take into account because it's hard, high level hard to master. And you've got to think at a higher level because it's army level combat, not not uh, not uh, hex based small small unit stuff. Okay, so with this tank over here, we can blitz, but it'll cost us one fuel and one ammo. We can break through. Now the blitz, the difference with the blitz is it just uses our aeroplanes. It uses it uses the planes we have available uh, in the blitz. It, it 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 uses two planes, but in the break breakthrough breakthrough, it doesn't use the planes. So if we do a blitz, okay, so we got our guy there. We've bombed now. Now I want to blitz. Cool. So I've progressed 29% in this, right? And I've destroyed the sixth army. So he's destroyed. So I've destroyed him. He's out of the picture. Now the problem is, is because I've blitzed in this area, I'm isolated. And I have exposed flanks. Okay, that's the blitz. Then I can decide, okay, let's assault with the infantry. Because we we're not gonna we're not we've got still three points available three uh, command points and I sold the infantry and it tells me the six army ceases to exist this is the stuff I captured there is the progress seven percent okay and let's just do another assault boom and the same thing now I've used up ammo and 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 fuel every time I do an action now I've got one action left. I can reverse the front, which means that he'll turn his back. He's gone far ahead. He'll turn his back and come and attack these guys from behind. I can do a deep raid. A deep raid means, bait. well, yeah, a deep raid means I'll progress. I've got, I'm at 42% now, but I'll make huge progress. But then I'll be isolated, exposed flanks, and cut off. So I'd, I'm, I might not want to do that. Or I could then do a defensive withdrawal, which would remove these two. These two isolated and exposed flanks. But remember something. If I do something like, if I do a defensive withdrawal, I'll do a defensive withdrawal now. Boom. So that's removed. Now I've gone back to, but I lost progress. You see where my mouse is? I lost progress, and, but it brought my panzer back. Now that's all I can do here. Okay, there we go. That's the one front. And I have no more command points. Now let's just do the Romanians. The Romanians have nothing in the back. They have no reserves in the back. And they've got the the third Ro Roman uh, Romanian army, the fourth Romanian army, the eleventh army, and they have a second Romanian core here. This this one, the arrow there next to it means it's in reserve. But because it's so low on cohesion, I'm gonna refit it. Boom. So it gave me two ammunition. Uh, two co co one ammunition, two cohesion, and one troops. So I, I was helped a bit there. I'll do the same for him. Because he's also very low over here. Boom. And I'll bring him to the front. That's all my moves. So now he's in the front. He's going he's gonna to take part in this next... In our next uh, combat. Next turn's combat. I could do nothing more with him. Now we'll go to Army Group Center. And he's got these kinds of... He's got these uh, cores, security cores. You can send him to the road to Minsk. Minsk, Minsk, Minsk. You can send him south. You can send him north to help out, depending. And it costs a point. All right. So I'm going to now look at the operation that we have over here. Okay. So over here, we've got these, these, these uh, Russian, this Russian uh, force that's over here. So I'm going to attack the airfield. I think uh, four airfields there I'll do an air superiority okay just to give you an idea it took three planes and I now have air superiority now I can't blitz anymore all right and I've got only three points so I will do a breakthrough and I will do another breakthrough now I'm 63% on this area 
and I can choose to, I've got enough fuel, but I'm isolated and exposed, and I've got enough fuel. I can then do an assault. I'll do an assault with infantry. Boom. So I'm 70. That's all I can do over here. And it tells me what's axe enough. Surrounded the 10th Army. Uh, the Western District uh, formation has is, is been killed. So it, you don't pick the units that it'll fight. The, they, will, they will do their own uh, combat. Depending on the actions that is available to them. Okay, good. So that's that. Now we'll go to the north. So he's got these res uh, reserves in the north. And you can send him to the Baltic. You can send him to the center. But you've got to send him to the center and then set to get him to the south. And for example, these guys that if I wanted to take this uh, Panzer Army Group 2 and I wanted to, well, let me just use this as an example. Say I wanted to move him to the, su the southern Army Group south. I would have to put him in reserve. Right, I'd have to put him first in reserve, then he would go into reserve, then I have to put him in a strategic reserve, I think it's a strategic reserve, which means he would go back to army groups north, and then army groups north at following time, if I used the point, I could then send him to the center, to army group center, and then when army group center gets him, I could send him to south. You see, you see you're using points all the time, it's fascinating. Okay, so over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also do a airfield attack. And I won't do the air superiority because it's dis uh, disputed, but I'll keep it. I'll do the blitz. So I'm right now. And it tells you here that you get all the stuff here that says there uh, you captured one truck as well. And we destroyed, this was the, the 8th Army, looks like it. Alright, so now I'm going to assault. I can even shell. So if your armies have got artillery and you're going to assault and he's fortified, what helps him is you if you shell, you shell this area, yeah, then you can, you can, it'll be easier for you to assault. So I won't do that. I can split the army if I want to. It'll, it'll make two cores, I think. So you can split it as well. So I will s assault. Okay, so it's, I've destroyed now the, the N NKVD border guards. They're don't exist anymore uh, and I'll do another assault over there okay now what I'll do is I won't I won't withdraw do a withdraw I'll do a reverse front so what the reverse front does is it takes away the isolated but it keeps your exposed fangs so what the panthers do is they turn back they go deep in and they turn back they turn back in and 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 attack these guys from behind so if you're doing envelopments and that sort of thing so I'll reverse the front. There we go. Okay, so they sky through and the 11th Army ceased to exist. I came in from behind him. But yet now I'm short of, of ammunition. Now ammunition, you need ammunition in the game. If, you, if the, the, your, your units, your army groups don't fight well without ammunition. They're seriously hampered without it. And they need fuel as well. And sometimes some of the infantry also need some fuel. Because they've got trucks and stuff. Right, that's all I can do there. That's done for the turn. That's basically the turn. Now, my barbar bar barbarism is still at zero. So I will then go to the next turn. Now, I'll play another turn. Just so you get a, uh, an idea of the flow of the game. And then just so you can get a better idea. So I'll play one more turn. Okay, so you get this. These uh, events coming up. As the game, very historical. As the game progresses, the different things that happened. Uh, with the Eins... Eins Eins of Group and C when they loosed, uh, unleashed all their barbar barbarism against the Jews and in the in the, in the cities and and all this type of stuff. So it gives you a nice little story of what happened there, and the ferocity of the uh, the militiamen has not escaped Himmler's attention, who needs to organise these men into auxiliary police units. So a, a auxiliary police unit is available, but my barbarism now increases by one, and I got a choice here. When our troops, and I'll read this so you can get an idea. When our troops entered uh, Konas, they found that the city had already been liberated by the Lithuanian, Lithuanian partisans. The latter seized the large uh, deposits of Soviet small arms and began a ferocious purge on their own Jews, communists and collaborators. Our troops were welcomed as <coughs> liberators, but the situation in the city is out of control. As the command 
as out of control as killings and lootings and burnings occur across the streets of this place. The commander of the initial conclusion must react. Now you get this, these interesting decisions. You can gain an extra, let's integrate these partisans into our army. So you gain an extra auxiliary unit, but barbarism by two. You can let the Einsengruppen take over. Barbar, barbar, barbarous, barbar, geez, I can't. Your barbaric actions in, uh, increase your bar, barbary. Um, ammunition and fuel, plus one for the German, but your barbarism increases. And ammunition and fuel, uh, plus one for German unit that, uh, this unit will be pinned but you don't you, your barbarism doesn't in, 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 in advance or, or get worse but you have a german unit that's pinned so i'll take over that i'll get because i'd like fuel uh, for the german unit ammunition and fuel and then it tells you there what you one one german army got one plus plus one ammo and one and plus one fuel and the your barbarism's increased by two now i did that because um you know, uh, fuel and ammunition, you run out of that stuff and it costs a command point to use it. So, so there's trade-offs, trade-offs that you're taking all the time. Now, this is just the discipline lacking in the 109th uh, Police Battalion. I'm not going to read through this. I'm just going to pick this bar. Bar Barbarism will increase by one, but my SDR discipline must be restored. And it tells you that the security core, security core, 102 cohesion minus and barbarism plus one okay finland at war now the finnish enter the war uh and then it goes through a story of why the Finns entered and how they entered and you continue and the finnish armies and fronts are activated and then it gives you a choice of one operation or one operation or two operations now in the north i'll read this part in the far north general i can't pronounce it has seized the finnish a compromised site and its nickel deposits. From there, you can launch an operation to cut the port of Murmansk from the rest of the USSR. This port is ice-free all year round and represents the most practical connection with the Great Britain, through which material and even English troops could arrive. The OKW has planned two joint operations: one along the coast towards the port itself, and another south to cut the railway line which connects Murmansk to the southern regions. Now, General uh, Hero of Norfolk is hostile to this plan, and there, there is only one road towards Murmansk, and it crosses it crosses regions so inhospitable, inhospital, hospitable. Sorry, that it that they constitute a formidable natural defences. Okay, defence, inhospitable. Sure. Okay, so you can launch two operations, or you can just a single operation. So I'll pick the single one. Uh, then it tells you this this operation and you get that will give you one so it'll give you an extra victory point uh, the Mamansk Road will give you an extra victory point and then we the fear wants this as well and then you just the metal ogres gives you a little expla explanation there the enemy tanks have a chance what will happen what will happen if the Soviets learn to handle the monsters you know the the, the T-34s and the KV-1s that came out and this just tells you that enemy tanks have a chance to be very effective when the quality of the troops is at least veteran and the generals at least two the chances of service soviets benefiting from this bonus increases with each passing week and obviously the barbarism helps that all right so that's part now this is turn two so each turn now that the soviets have made their turn we're sitting at a, a barbarism of four it's now june the 29th 1941 and if I click on my area, then it gives, comes up with what the enemy did its turn. So the Russians also got their turns to do the same thing. And they've got different uh, different uh, capabilities. Like they can uh, issue um, human wave actions and stuff like that. So it's, there's unique stuff to the, to the Russians as well. So at the moment, they did an armored counter uh, uh, strike. And the air superiority they gained. And they lost three planes. And we... We lost one, but they 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 lost two tanks and they lost one cohesion. And we just lost cohesion, and they tried to have a go at us. And then there's this report that tells you in detail of what actually that that screen was about. So you can see it, and you can read it. All right, good. Now, so I've got my my turn now. So what I'll do? Let's let's do a ooh, let's do a 
an airfield attacks. I didn't kill any planes. There we go. And maybe we can, uh, and we haven't got enough to do a, we don't have, a, we didn't have enough planes. So we didn't have enough planes to do a, 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 a air superiority. We should have actually done that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Now, I can pick a general offensive or a breakthrough offensive. Now this, because you see here, let me give you an idea here. This here is a, it's not an operation, it's just a front. Now, in order to create like an arrow in operation, I have to pick pick the operation. It costs one point, command point. So I pick, uh, and each one has advantages. Like a general offensive is great when I've got a lot of units in the front and he's got very little, so I attack on all fronts. Now, a breakthrough is like finding a point of weakness and breaking through. But you can have your flanks isolated and all this type of stuff. And it all explains it to you in the wiki. And I can also go, I can... I can also pick the road to Kiev. Even though I am with this, I can decide I'm going to maybe abandon this, not go to Odessa, and, and, and go with the south to Kiev. So you've got all these interesting decisions to make. But anyway, we'll we'll pick a breakthrough. Okay? So now it's gone and said, I'm going to Odessa. There's the breakthrough going. So I've got now, I've got one action left, and I will assault with the 11th Army. Oh. And then it just tells me this progress 7%. The Soviet losses are artillery, infantry, and cohesion. All right, brilliant. Now that's them done. I can't do any more with them. Now this one. Now on my screen, I know it's a bit garbled here. My resolution on my monitor, uh, because of my resolution, it doesn't go higher than a certain resolution. So the lower resolutions, you get this. It's not a bug. It's just, it's a little bit garbled here when it's explaining to you, you know, what the action is. But it doesn't affect gameplay because I have all the, you see, you get all the the results of what the the the, uh, the Russians actually did. So you can browse all of it on the side, yeah. You understand? So it's just with my monitor. Unfortunately, my monitor is not, not going higher than 1,366 by 768. It's my monitor. It's not my PC. And uh, yeah, so and I think on the lower resolution uh, resolutions in the game, they didn't effectively optimize it on the lower resolutions. I've seen this on YouTube with normal guys playing with higher resolutions. It's fine; you don't get that garbled thing. It's just because of my resolution, I didn't. I don't think the developers have actually uh, uh, had or aware of this, but it's it's not a problem because all the, as I said, all the information is here on the screen. Right, and you can up and down it over there, and all the report is over here. So if I can't read it, then that's the only thing that's garbled. So oh, anyway, let's get down to where I am now. This is now the uh, this is now the southern front, uh, the road to Kiev. All right, that's the road we're going. We've got thirty-seven percent of the road there. So I'm going to now uh, do a, I'm going to do an air superiority so I can get that back and I kill two planes and I lose one plane. I'm going to blitz, <clears throat> all right, with that panzer. So I'll get some. I'm going to assault, all right, with that, with one infantry. And I'm also going to assault with this. I've got to be careful of my command points, but I'm 64% away, away there. And I'm going to assault. And it tells you how. What armies were destroyed? Uh, what was the result of that assault? Now, I'm isolated. I can actually do a deep raid. This will give me, might even, might even cut these guys off. But I'll be isolated. But I'll do it anyway, just to just give you the idea. Okay, so I do a deep raid. And I got 9%. I didn't get as much as I thought. And I'm pretty much out of ammunition. And then the next, I could be in real trouble. I've got stretched lines, exposed flanks, and isolated. But in the next turn, what I'll do is I will, I'll do an airlift if there's an airlift. But I think I, what I did with with this deep raid, I think I. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't. But if you if you have a castle and you deep raid, you cir encircle. See this? This is the fourth mechanized core. It's isolated expo and it's in a castle. Okay, the army surrounded by the enemy and it's cut off from its supplies. Okay, so it's it's encircled. And that's what a castle is. Yeah, this is a castle. There's these. So if this this screen, if this thing gets more than six messages, it goes garbled like this. But anyway, the stuff is all down here at the bottom, so it's not the problem. All right. So I'm I'm going to 
in this this is a castle so there's this there's and there's the progress towards it so if i did a deep raid i'm sure i would i'm sure i'd be able to 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 encircle these guys but i or could also re reverse the front but i'm going to do the um air superiority so i get air superiority and i'm going to i'm going to i'm not going to raid behind the lines I'm isolated. Let me just assault with one of these O's. So now they can see that. Now, if I do a... Ah, I don't have that. I don't have the deep raid. Okay, so you see, this this is dynamic. This depends on the situation that... See, I, I remember, I think I had the... Deep, yeah, there's the raid behind, but not the deep raid. So I only have the reverse front. And I have enough ammunition. And I can also airlift. Now that costs three planes and it'll give me one of each, which is fine, but I don't need it right now. Or I could send him to the Baltic, to Army Group North. Now how about there? Or I could split the army. So what I'll do is I'll split the army just so you can see what it does. So it creates these smaller sort of like motorized and cores, these smaller cores. So I've split that. So you've, I've extended my front. You understand? And I can do the stuff with them as well individually i can reverse front with them uh i can reverse front with them but i've only got two points command points so you gotta i remember i'm, I'm limited yeah so i will reverse the front with this boom so basically that's what's happened i've reversed the front and the, the soviet forces lost one tank and one cohesion and i'm going to do i won't do an airlift Oh, if I do an airlift, it'll replace both my. So I'm isolated. So I can't do much else with that, even though I have one command point. You know what I'll do? I'll do an air airlift so you can see what actually happens with that. It uses three planes. So the airlift gives me one, replace it. Because I'm behind enemy lines, I've now been able to be airlifted. But he's all surrounded over here. Yeah. So, and I've split this up. I did it just for the purpose of the video. So you could see what these all become cores little cores and it breaks up that arm that army into two armored cores and well yeah two armored cores and infantry and an infantry core that sort of thing so that's that's what you can't i don't think you can split that up any further all right so my advancement to the uh, is 76 percent of the way okay now i'll do the north gives me the idea yeah of what happened and i will also I will do an air superiority to get rid of his air superiority. I'll do a blitz. All right. And that's what actually happened there. Um, and when it's highlighted, when it's dark like this, it means it's like combat ineffective or something like that. And I will do, uh, I'll do an assault. And I will do another assault. And basically that's it. Now, I'm 100%. Of the way now when i've completed this part 100 percent, this first operation now i've got i've got two fronts here let me just go in here so you can see i've got this estonia front and i've got this in the estonia front i can op ask because i only got one point this is a whole of army group north and i've got the others two split over here so i can basically refuel or re ammo or I could start an operation over there. So I'll start an operation here. So I'll make it as a breakthrough operation. So then it will come up now. This is part of the Baltic. So in my next turn, if he has units there, if he's put units there, I will then, you know, do whatever I need to do there. Uh, in order, I will fight the units in there, the Russian units in there. Then we've got this, the Finns. Now, uh, the Mamansk, the Mamansk, Oh, see, let me just go over here. The Mamansk uh, area was just, we, we, we didn't choose two fronts. We just chose one front. So let me go in there and give you an idea. But I've only got two points for Norway. See there, uh, let me go in closer. There's Norway and I've got two reserves in Norway. And these are, these are uh, mountain units. And I could send, I could send to, I could send to that front. Or I can send it to Finland to help out with that area or whatever. So this front here, this one here, sorry, let me get near that one. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do, 
Uh, I can't do anything else. I've got just two, and I don't have any planes in this area. Let me just give you an idea. There's not enough planes to do those operations. So I'll do a breakthrough. Okay, so that will start an operation over there. Over here, I will do the same thing. I'll do a breakthrough. And then let me just see if I can, uh, but I don't want to waste air superiority. So I'll do an assault. Boom. And I destroyed the Leningrad fortified regions. I destroyed that. Okay, so he's basically destroyed. He's out. All right, that's all that. And, that, and I've got one more, one more uh, for Finland. But remember something with Finland, I've got these, I've got another front over here that also needs stuff. So I will then do an airfield attack and I kill four blacks. All right, so I'm basically done for the turn. Oh, I have one. Yeah, in Norway, I forgot about it. Uh, let me go up to this area. I've got one more. Okay, so let's just. Now, infiltration, if his lines are very loose. His, 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 his lines are very loose. You can infiltrate behind and through the lines. It gives you a lot of progress. So I will, just as an, uh, cleaning operations is important because you, you, in your, I don't have it here. Maybe I'll see it in the next, in the next turn. But your cleaning operations, uh, when you get bandits, you can use units to clean in the background. That, but it, it, it increases your barbarism. But you can use units to clean and you usually use security units and stuff like that. So you've got to keep an eye on that. They cut your lines and, and, and wipe out your trucks. All right. So our, a hedgehog's defense just means it's like a, a sort of a, you, you defend in pockets. So it's very good defense. But the, 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 or if he's got a lot of units, he can get, he can bypass them. That sort of thing. Um, I will, and, and I will scout. Scouting is good. When you do infiltration, scouting helps that. And each one of them, as I said earlier, is all here. And it's got two tips, which gives you a detailed explanation of what you've done there. All right, so I'll just, I'll assault. I'll assault with that group there. It tells me basically with a walk, walking log, uh, Soviet losses were two, and it was against the 120, 122nd Infantry Division, that division over there. And he's now stretched lines. Okay, uh, because... Stretched lines, forces this army are geographically stretched, either because it defends a front which is too wide, or because the lack of fuel or differences in engine power prevented its different components from advancing at the, at the same rate. Okay, good. So that's it. That's all. That's all I can do for now. All right. That's all I can do for now. Now, in, e in each one of these fronts, you will have... You will have some information that's not very clear as what he has, but you kind of know from your reconnaissance. And as you increase your reconnaissance, you'll be able to know what's in his fronts. You know what, what the front is, what the units he has in this army center of operations, but then he has this reserve front, like yours. And you can also look and see. Usually when they grade out, they're like combat ineffective. All right. Um, yeah, that's it. And then this is the next turn. And then... You get these interesting decisions as you go along, which affect you. For example, what do we do with the prisoners? We must feed them. But if we feed them, um, Army Group Center Command loses one one point this turn, and Army Group Center Rail uses two, loses two supply. Now remember, the supplies when you're supplying your armies, you've just you know the the fuel and the army uh, supplies. That thing gets used up when you do operations. Now you need to resupply that. We can feed them, but it'll cost you this. Or we can, we, we, they shouldn't have this surrendered. So the barbarism, uh, the barbarism is increased by five. I'll pick that for now. So you've got to remember now, this barbarism, in fact, the higher you get, the higher your barbarism, the more, if, the more tough it is, the more harder it is to beat the Russians, the more tough they become, the more harder they become, the more they get their cohesion back. Because you're being barbar barbaric in their country. <coughs> so yeah, sorry. Um, excuse me. So that's it, and that's that's how it, that's how it turns. And you just you get different missions depending on where you are. Now, for example, uh, now I can in this. I'm I'm not going to go on. I can I can take one of these guys. Say this the fourth Ro Romanian army, um, and I can put him on the road to Kiev, which me effectively means he goes into this operation to help me again in Kiev. And 
I'm now on the road to Kiev. I still need 75. And then I just rinse and repeat. I bring in reserves. I also look and see. I just want to see if there's any. Uh, there's the bandits. Now the bandits. Okay, let me give you an idea. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. He has the bandits, right? I don't know if it's in the... If you, if you get the south, if it's... The, no, you don't have them. You've got to clear them in your front. Okay, as you move along here. So, he has the bandits. Okay, so basically what the bandits is... They, 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 they're partisans. Your supply lines. They wipe out your trucks and all this type of stuff. And there's extreme heat. Uh, making fighting so this affects your units and then the marsh the area that you're in also affects the movement the capabilities the cohesion so it's simulating army level combat you understand i know it's for me it was a because i've been looking for a game like this for years but still i'm so used to playing i mean i'm so used to playing the small level squad combat uh, division regiment combat with the with artillery, you know what the capabilities. I'm so used to that. It's just like a, a breath of fresh air. And it took me a bit of a while. It's still taking me a bit of a while to get used to it, because it's a conceptual game. You don't have, you don't, you can't see, you can't see the ground, but you kind of know this is the area, and, and you've got actions that each one of these guys can do, and their capabilities, and you've got to like visually uh, picture it. Like where you are, you know, in this thing and how you... So it's very unique. Like, for example, lagging behind. So some of your troops will lag behind. This year has trouble keeping up with fast. It does not make pro Operation Progress. It does not make Operation Progress when it attacks. You see, you get all these little capabilities and all these little uh, things that happen to you is when they're isolated. So <coughs> you can make a defensive withdrawal. You won't be isolated anymore. So we'll do that. But I'll lose some progress to my to my thing so if i go to fit he loses all that isolation but i've lost uh let me give you an idea i've lost uh five percent of my progress in that area and i've also short of fuel and ammo Are you with me there it says there short of fuel and you can see it if i airlift him i'll get one each but remember it's costing points and it's costing airplanes you understand so yeah you got to factor, factor all of that in there and also your trucks you as you go you you get supplies you you capture supplies and it's added to your trucks and then you lose them but you got to also remember that everything in your army group self all his units all his stuff is replacing what you've lost so you don't have unlimited supplies fantastic fantastic really what an awesome game all right, I'm going to end it here. You know, I've, I think I've, I think I've given you a, a, a. I mean, I'm not an expert at this. I'm just beginning myself, but I've kind of given you an idea of how, in terms of a tutorial, of how the game actually plays out. So you must look forward to it. Let me just get to the main screen here, and then you save the game. There's your screen resolutions you can pick. You can have all kinds of screen, right up to two five six by one four four eight. Uh, I'll go to the main menu, and I'm back here again. Okay, so what I'll do is, now the music, you can't, you can't switch the music off, because the music plays, it plays until it's finished. Alright, I went and switched off, I paused the video and went and switched off the, the music. Now the music, you either have sound or you don't have sound, it comes with the music. Now you can't, there's no volume control, so that's the only unfortunate thing, and you can't switch the music off. But the music plays plays the whole tune out and then ends and then there's no more music so then when you come back to the main menu you get the music and that, so i just paused the video and went switched it off all right i was just one of my fi finding final uh, comments and, and and closure on this game and and, and my impressions all right so i'm going to be playing uh, this cauldrons of war uh, barbarossa right through i'm going to play the campaigns as the germans um as the germans with all these operations and i'll be playing it Oh, jeez, I don't want to go. Oh, I can't go back. I can't go back to the main menu. won't play because I switched off the sound. And I'm going to be playing the, the campaign. I'm not going to be doing it till, till it's finished. I mean, it's too long. So I'll be doing it in pieces, like in 40-minute in segments, in parts. And then maybe the scenarios, maybe these scenarios, if they're not 
too long, I'll do them in one video. But this I'll definitely break up into five or six videos, five or six parts. So 40-minute 40, 40, 40 minute segments. Um, and I'll also, um, I'm going to play as the Soviets as well. And do all of these from the Soviet side as well. All right. And I'm going to also, I don't know if I'll be able to, this is you need to get 11 points as the germans maybe maybe we can unlock the great campaign if we if we if, i don't know we'll do that but yeah you have to get 11 points as the germans so i'd have to complete the german campaign with 11 points in order to unlock the great campaign <coughs> love it army level combat army level combat simulated at an army level not at small units small brigade levels which is done to death today and i love to bits and i love to play and but it's oversaturated everybody all the developers want to do that. Nobody thinks of doing a game like this. It's the only game I've seen ever. I mean, I've been looking for, for a game like this in years. And I remember army level combat, not small unit combat. You understand? You, I haven't found one. And I was just so lucky. I was looking for a game for my YouTube channel to supplement my, my present playlist with, 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 with an extra game. And I came across this and it was so cheap. I mean, I paid 100, 100 rand, South African rands. I mean, that's like like five dollars or something and i got the uh the cauldrons of war stalingrad the expansion to this and barbarossa i uh, can't wait to get started now i'll play that as well i'll do a separate overview and, and tutorial of that one as well when when i when i get down to playing that after i finish this yeah looking forward to it really really good I'm really impressed uh, i played it for a couple of hours i mean i've had it for about a week and i've been playing it every day um and 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 getting used to it and getting to know it that's how i knew all the little pieces there but i still there's no manual that comes with it you kind of like you got to read the wiki and just it's a basically a trial and error game <laughs> that's how it is but uh the reviews were fantastic and, and i love it i love it i can't wait to play it i'm sure you guys will love it as well it's really really and very unique uh in terms of, of what i said earlier uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think I've covered uh, the basics and overview. I, I try to do my best. I hope I could explain. I'm sure I left stuff out. I mean, yeah, I, uh, but you, I, I hope you got the gist, the general idea of how the game works, the operation and how it works. And go get it. Go get it. It's worth every penny. I mean, it's really a good game. Good reviews, and I've been having a blast on it. So, yeah, look forward to my series on the Cauldrons of War, op uh, Operation Barbarossa. Yeah. Uh, Sean, for, please uh, subscribe to my channel. It's free. And also leave comments and suggestions. And watch my videos and like them as well. I mean, it helps me a lot. All right, until our next, till our operation, uh, Cauldrons of War, Barbarossa, first video. Uh, good day on you.